Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, back in early October, I got a message from Ollie of Ollie's Astro saying, hey, what do you reckon about doing a collaboration on a target? And I thought, it'd be a great idea. I've watched lots of videos of people doing collaborations over the Northern Hemisphere. And since we're both in the Southern Hemisphere, um, it seemed like a great idea if we could pick a target that would um, be nice and high in the sky for both of us. I'm in New Zealand, he's across the ditch in Australia. So uh, we met up over Zoom and had a few discussions uh, about what we were going to do and we ended up settling on the Dolphin Head Nebula, uh, also known as SH2-308. Let's whip across the ditch to Victoria in Australia and uh, see what equipment Ollie's going to be using for his part of the collaboration. Um, so this is the Skywatcher 150 PDS, 6 inch Newtonian. An excellent little scope for the price. I've had this now for a few months and the images you get out of it are amazing considering it costs $600, which is like a third, about a third of the refractor. Um, got the 60 millimeter um, SV Boney guide scope on that. I've got the 224 MC, um, which I'm using as a guide camera. Um, so it's on the Saxon AZ EQ6, which is the same as a Skywatcher. Mount's been really good so far with the scope on it, really nice and solid. I find I'm not losing many subs at all. And, and I got the usual 2600 MC Pro cooled on that. And then in the filter drawer, we've got the L Extreme filter, which is the duo narrowband filter. I'm going to be imaging the target out here in the observatory. Uh, anybody who's seen my previous videos will be familiar with this setup as it's the thing I've been using the most for uh, imaging targets and that is the Skywatcher Esprit 120 uh, triplet refractor. It has a, a focal length of 840 millimeters. Um, at the back here the camera I'm using is the ASI 2600 MM Pro and in this rather large filter wheel, uh, the two inch filters. Now I have the Beta LRGB filters and the Optolong SHO narrowband filters, but for this, for this particular target, I'd just be um, using HA and O3. Uh, the focusing is being done by the Pegasus Astro Focus Cube here. So it works really well. And uh, also up here, I've got the Pegasus Astro um, Powerbox Advanced distributing some of the power, particularly to the um, dew heaters. The whole thing is sitting on this nice, sturdy CEM120, Ultron CEM120 mount, um, which I'm really enjoying using. It's, it's um, solid as and uh, quite happily handles the weight of the setup without a problem whatsoever. The target's been rising sort of up over in this direction over in the east and coming up over the roof of the house. When I first started imaging this some weeks ago um, I had to wait till about 1.32 o'clock in the morning for it to um, rise high enough for me to um, shoot past the roof of the observatory but uh, more recently it's been coming up around about 11, 11.30 so um, that's been a, a, a lot better. That's my setup and as I said I'm just collecting a narrowband HA and O3. I mean I've got it recording now just out of interest and... Yeah, no, then go for it, yeah. I think I'll, um, if I do... I'll do it as well just in case we say something that might be interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm not sure if it will be but... If I we do, probably should we, we probably should say something about Lord of the Rings yeah. and something about snakes because everyone from England that will be their two main key you know their buy-ins their references to the video. Yeah, well for us it would just be what hedgehogs. I, hedgehogs, think, yeah. I think that's the most vicious thing around here. There's a hedgehog, pretty much. We can sort of look at see what happens over the next sort of two or three weeks about how much we can collect on. SH2-308, the Dolphin Head Nebula, which I need to mention if we're going to record this for the video. <laughs> um, at least so we are doing the Dolphin Nebula. The yeah. Dolphin Head Nebula, yes. Which, dolphin um, Head Nebula. I've got Stellarium open here and uh, I've loaded in the target Dolphin Nebula or SH2-308, so it's part of the Sharpless catalogue. And here is the target here, and we'll have a look at a little bit closer in a minute. 
I've actually set the landscape up to be the inside of my observatory so I can get an idea of when targets will be rising above the walls of the observatory and above the peak of the house. Now this is not perfect by any means, um, clearly my telescope is not in two pieces like this and the, the walls and the roof are better constructed than this, but I was just using my iPhone and handheld. If I wanted something a lot more perfect, you would put it on a tripod, but a handheld gives me uh, a pretty good idea of where the walls are, where targets will be at what time, so it was good enough. Um, if we just zoom in closer, this is what the Dolphin Head Nebula looks like and it's this very big blue bubble uh, that does look like the head of the dolphin. There's the mouth over here or the snout of, um, of the dolphin and the head, uh, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the eye, it's probably a little bit out of place but anyway, uh, this is what it looks like, it's quite a cool target. Now in this picture it just shows it being predominantly an O3 or oxygen 3 target, so just the blue, but there is actually some hydrogen alpha in here which is a little harder to pull out and that will be the challenge when Ollie and I image this, is to try and pull out some of that more fine hydrogen alpha, uh, which is a little uh, more sort of subtle in this area of the dolphin head and there's sort of a few bits and pieces uh, around uh, in the outside. So that's the target. If we look here, um, back at, at the beginning of October was when we first discussed imaging this target. Uh, you had to be up, I had to be up at about two o'clock in the morning. That's when it rose up high enough for me to start imaging. But as uh, we moved on through to say late, if we come through zip ahead to uh, late November, and I can just bring this time back and you can see here we're about 11 o'clock it's it's nice and high above the the roof and the walls and uh, the plan is to try and collect somewhere between 30 and 40 hours of possible between the two of us I will be imaging in narrowband only so it'll be HA and O3 and Ollie will be imaging with a one shot color camera and I think an Extreme filter and the challenge will be combining those two um, bits of data together to get the one image. Fortunately our telescopes are not too far apart as far as focal length is concerned and the other thing is we are using the ASI 2600. I'm just using the mono version and he's using the color version so you know there's a lot of similarities in the size of the sensor there um, and pixels so that should help make life a little easy when we're combining the data. How's it going? Can you oh, see uh, me yet? No, I can't see you yet. <laughs> oh, well, I can see a sort of a image of you trying to stare through your telescope. <laughs> Half in a Bayer matrix. Why? So video now, is it going to work? Yeah, okay. So, start video. Something's happening. Oh, good day. Yay! Ah, hey! <laughs> hey. Hello! Yeah, I, did, I didn't admit you. <laughs> <laughs> I was in there going, come on, come on, you can go there when you said that you got it. And I was like, oh, what a minute. Oh, yeah, it must. Okay, all right. I think we did it. I think we've got there. What about, so I think did I, um, um, I think I did 24 hours and you did 22. So yeah, about 22. If, yeah. if I've miscalculated mine, um, there'll be a correction on the screen <laughs> about now. <laughs> but um, so we should have, we've got 46 hours. Bloody hell, that's a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, which, the, yeah, I mean, well, that was the thing I noticed that when you see collaborations, you can see the, the amount of hours that people can, can you know, yeah 
build up really quickly. Whereas if you're doing it by yourself, and particularly with the weather we've had recently, yeah, <clears throat> we'd be going till 2024 to try and do it individually. I did. Um, I was doing monochrome for the video. I was doing monochrome um, HA and O3, and you were doing one shot color camera um, and doing. And I had the L Extreme filter in yeah. Extreme filter. Yeah. So, um, about the same cameras, effective, sort of the same cameras, the ASI yeah. 100. Yeah, these are the two. That's your hydrogen alpha on the right. Yeah. And that's mine on the um, left. So, if I so zoom into yours here and I zoom into mine over here. So, yours on the right, mine on the left. I yeah. can definitely see, like, it, there's, a, there's definitely a bit more in yours, but. There's a, it's not as, yeah. as exaggerated as I thought it would be. No, I was actually quite amazed at how, um, and I think yours had looked looked a little noisier. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think on all images, even on your O3, I noticed how yours is a, a kind of a smooth noise. And yeah. mine's much more of a, yeah. But it's interesting because, yeah, okay, you can see that there is a difference, but it's not massive. Yeah. Um, it is, yeah. It's quite surprising that, I mean, I'd still, I can still, like, if I get in really close, like into yeah. this bit here, I can definitely see the detail that you've got on there yes. compared to mine, which is a bit more fuzzy. But I was still happy to, like, yeah, I, I kind of just expected that you would get, like, sort of quite a lot more than that. But yeah. And again, the advantage gonna... of having more than one person processing the same image, because you can, you'll come up slightly differently and then you can go, hang on a minute, I think we can get the best of both of these things. Yeah. Um, I just looking now on the screen, I've just got your dolphin in blue. And one yeah. thing I really noticed, one thing I really noticed when looking at yours is just how like smooth it was. Like yeah, a little, I just I notice how it, maybe it's a little too smooth. I don't know. Um, and I, think, I don't know. I quite like it. <laughs> it looks pretty good to me. But it was your. Yeah. That, it was all this little extra detail that was in there. And I'll, I'll, if I bring it up and in, in, um, let's see, I've got it in. Uh, I have to bring up check which one this. I've kept the Photoshop version which had the multiple layers. This was what I had, um, and it was fine color and star color. And I'm just going to turn off that, and I'm going to turn off. I'm just trying to turn off, uh, I'll, I'm not sure if I can actually turn off one that's going to, but I'll just zoom in, oops, get rid of that, don't need that. <laughs> you need to sign it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if we just move in here, okay, and you can see all the nice sort of strandy detail here. Yeah. Um, but if we take out, if I put on, I've just got, uh, where are we going to, I've got to turn that one off. There we go. So ah. I got to this point and nice and smooth but i looked at it and i was like and i compared it with yours and i noticed that whilst i might have had a bit more of the color you had maintained more of the detail and i'd, I'd gone too far with whatever i was doing and then as soon as i put yours in behind here if i put put um this in here there's a luminance see that can you see uh, that? yeah jump if i move yeah. up here i just turn it on and off smooth much more detail. Oh, you can really see it, can't you? Yeah, on that it one, just Jesus. jumped out. Yeah. yeah, in the end, um, uh, I think we've come up with quite a nice image. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with it. I think like I didn't really know how that would go because of different focal lengths, mono, and and color combined. But on yeah. this target, at least, I think it worked really well. I think it has worked well, and I think it's actually worked well having more than one person process it. No, I think it's really good logo. I think it's a really nice, I think it's a great end result. Um, I'm really pleased that that we did the combination, that, you know, the yeah. process it and then combine them because I think um, that it, it brought the best, of, as I said, the best of both worlds. I've said that several times, but... Um, yeah, no, really I think it's, it's I, I like it. I, I think, I think like, um, I'm glad that w for the amount of time we spent on it, I'm glad that it's actually got the, you know that wow factor to it you know yeah, like i think if we'd have spent 40 hours and i'd have been like hmm, you know <laughs> i'd be like that's not fair you know 